This is an active airport at the top of a mountain in Southern California. And this weekend, people are gonna be racing cars up here. I have a car I'm bringing, my 2007 Toyota Yaris. All right, autocross in the mountains. Let's do it. Well, that's not good. The Yaris's new smaller battery doesn't like to sit for a long time, so I gotta remember to disconnect it every time I work on the car. But a quick charge and we're ready to go. Ugh. All right, let's try that again. Works for me. All right, so this is autocross in Big Bear. We're at about 6,000 feet of elevation, which means the uh, uh, non-turbo cars are gonna be struggling a little bit, especially if they only have 100 horsepower to begin with. Um, this is put on by a group called Corner Exit, uh, and it's a really small group today. It's only like 20 cars. Uh, and the reason is because tomorrow they're doing like their actual competition here. So this is kind of just a test and tune day for any of their guys who are taking it seriously or any people who are brand new and need instruction. Uh, so I'm just here just to shake down the Yaris a little bit because uh, I haven't had as much seat time as I'd like with this new suspension. Uh, and any seat time is good uh, going up against uh, everybody in the TRD series. So uh, we're just gonna give the Yaris a, a try today. but I'm pretty bougie about it and I've never done a group where I have to do coursework. So I'm gonna go do coursework for the first time. Okay, so out here on course, ready for uh, cars to come by. Basically, I'm out here to make sure that uh, if anyone knocks down a cone, we can pick it up. But also, this track is an active airfield. So if planes are coming by, they need to know. say that my Yaris really shines at autocross, that a lightweight car is more important than a high horsepower car. But the real standouts at autocross are grip and skill, and some of these cars have tons of both. Autocross is a place where you can get some real misfit matchups, and pretty soon it was time for my misfit to hit the track. Alright, let's get some times in quick, because it is starting to rain. Yeah, gotta get some runs in before that rain comes. The first lap of the day is not about going fast. It's about learning the course. An autocross course is laid out as a series of cones, so it's gonna take you at least a lap to try and figure out what all these cones are trying to tell you. There are indicator cones that point to where the apex of the corner should be. In a slalom, you have to know which direction you're supposed to go around the cones, but they're really all just cones. So it takes a second to figure everything out. And even if you've already been out there doing coursework, you might blow through the last corner and completely miss it because you didn't ever look at that part of the track. With my second run, I was asking a little too much of the car, and with water on the ground, that is a bad combo. But after a couple runs, I was starting to get the hang of the course. It took a lot less steering input than I initially thought. And pretty soon, the times were starting to tumble. Run 
time for the panda. Okay. The less skill you have as a driver, the more you improve throughout a session, and the less the factors of the car actually matter. Maybe one day I'll be experienced enough that my fast lap isn't always my last lap, but today it is. So here is my fast lap. Okay, so I got about 10 runs in. Um, started off a little above a 30 and ended up at a 29.4. I haven't had a chance to check what other people are doing. I know that Lambo was hitting 25s. The Corvette, I think, was doing 26s. Um, ZL1 was doing 26s. Other cars are doing 30s. So again, kind of middle of the road. Um, not middle of the road, but not not the slowest uh fastest front wheel drive car here how about that yeah fastest front wheel drive car only front wheel drive car um but we're now on break for 45 minutes we're gonna go grab some lunch or everybody else is gonna go grab some lunch i am gonna go grab a different car because this is the first opportunity that i've ever had to run the yaris and the frs back to back on the same course on the same day. So let's see how the uh, rear wheel drive car does. I went to go put the Yaris to bed and grab the FRS, but before I had even left the track, we were already starting to notice something. Spits of rain that had shown up during my session were starting to get a little bit worse and the clouds, they weren't going away. So by the time I got back to the track with the FRS, so I thought the FRS and the RS were gonna have an even playing field. And that is not the case. This is kind of not worth running. Now, there is huge benefit to running in the wet, especially on a test and tune day. You get much more acquainted with the grip that your car has and you can practice holding right on the limit at low speeds. But I don't need that in the FRS, I need that in the Yaris. And I was about to go back and get the Yaris, and then we started to get flash flood warnings. So rather than tempt fate, we packed up our soaked stuff and headed out. Oh, so I guess that's where we're gonna call it. I'm back at the cabin, the rain has died down although we're getting some severe flash flood warnings. Um, so better safe than sorry. We're gonna make sure that we're down the mountain before anything bad happens. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I'll have to um, find another time where the Yaris and the FRS can face off. So I guess I'm gonna make another video.